Good morning. I'm Pastor Gillespie from St. John Evangelical Lutheran Church and School, Sherman Center, Random Lake, Wisconsin. It's good to have you with us here today, Monday, November 8th, 2021. Our teachers are um, at teacher conference. I'm at Good Shepherd Institute, so uh, I'm coming to you out of time, but in time, on time, hopefully, 9 a.m. And uh, because of that, we don't have readings today and tomorrow assigned because our school is not in session. Um, but we have commemorations actually assigned by Lutheran Service Book both for today and tomorrow. So we're going to consider those in particular uh, for our devotional uh, meditation and prayer. As well, we'll begin to learn today the memory verses for this week as well. All right. Let's begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. And in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. All right, we have a fairly short memory verse, so hopefully you can commit it to memory. Uh, yet last week was a little bit longer, but there you go. All right, so let's say it together. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Romans 10, verse 17. Let's do it again. Say it with me. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Romans 10, verse 17. All right. I'm going to make a change to my layout here. Give me one moment. All right, there we go. Our psalm this week is Psalm 132. Can we say it? Remember, O Lord, in David's favor, all the hardships he endured, how he swore to the Lord and vowed to the mighty one of Jacob, I will not enter my house or get into my bed. I will not give sleep to my eyes or slumber to my eyelids until I find a place for the Lord, a dwelling place for the mighty one of Jacob. Behold, we heard of it in Ephrathah. We found it in the fields of Jaar. Let us go to his dwelling place. Let us worship at his footstool. Arise, O Lord, and go to your resting place, you and the ark of your might. Let your priests be clothed with righteousness, and let your saints shout for joy. For the sake of your servant David, do not turn away the face of your anointed one. The Lord swore to David a sure oath, from which he will not turn back. One of the sons of your body I will set on your throne. If your sons keep my covenant and my testimonies that I shall teach them, their sons also forever shall sit on your throne. For the Lord has chosen Zion, he has desired it for his dwelling place. This is my resting place forever. Here I will dwell, for I have desired it. I will abundantly bless her provisions. I will satisfy her poor with bread. Her priests I will clothe with salvation, and her saints I will shout for joy. There I will make a horn to sprout for David. I have prepared a lamp for my anointed. His enemies I will clothe with shame but on him 
his crown will shine. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. All right. Uh, So as I said, we have no assigned readings for today, um, but I thought a reading from Matthew 24 from the Treasury of Daily Prayer, which is basically the same idea of what we're doing, except it's a one-year cycle of readings and devotions and meditations. Um, This came out, oh, probably at least 10 years ago now, Um, and it's a lovely resource. It's kind of the inverse. Let's see here. It's kind of the inverse of what we're doing. Um, between lectionary and daily readings. All right, they're copyright 2008. So, wow, 13 years now, 14 years almost. Um, It's the inverse. So for the daily readings, if you use the treasury of daily prayer, it's a one-year cycle of readings for daily reading. Whereas then Sunday, you could use like the three-year series and get a three-year series of readings. We do the opposite. Sunday has a one-year series of readings right, which is the historic practice of of more or less, (laughs) right? And then for our daily readings, uh, we have a three-year cycle. And actually, that gives us a much more expansive reading of the Bible uh, than you would have um, if we did it the other way around, all right? But anyway, the Treasury Daily Prayer is a nice resource. You can also get this as an app for your phone. Um, You could use that to do like evening devotions if you're doing this in the morning or vice versa. So... It's a way to even supplement your prayers further. So a reading then from Matthew 24, beginning in verse 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then will appear in heaven the sign of the Son of Man. And then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send out his angels with a loud trumpet call, and they will gather his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts out its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also when you see these thi- all these things, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But concerning the day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven nor the Son, but the Father only. For as were the days of Noah, so will be the coming uh, the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving into marriage, until the day when Noah entered the ark, and they were unaware until the flood came and swept them all away, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two men will be left in the field, one will be taken and one left. Two women will be grinding at the mill, one will be taken and one left. Therefore stay awake, for you do not know on what day your hour is, your Lord is coming. But know this, that if the master of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore, you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Who then is the faithful and wise servant, whom his fast fought master has set over his household to give them their food at the proper time? Blessed is that servant whom his master will find doing so doing when he comes. Truly, I say to you, he will set him over all his possessions. But if the wicked servant says to himself, my master is delayed, and begins to beat his fellow servants and eats and drinks with drunkards, the master of that servant will come on a day when he does not expect him, and at an hour he does not know, and will cut him in pieces and put him with the hypocrites. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. All right, there ends the reading. Obviously, um, a significant reading for the end of the church year, but you'll see you heard an echo, I think, of uh, tomorrow or yesterday's, I should say, epistle reading, right, from First Thessalonians, where he said he will send out his angels with a loud trumpet call, and they will gather his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Right, so just like you heard yesterday, with the sound of in the voice of an archangel and the sound of the trumpet, 
and the dead in Christ will rise first. Okay, uh, also as we said, today is the commemoration of Johannes von Staupitz, Luther's father confessor. Right? And we're going to uh, have a little bit longer consideration of who he is, and then actually a reading from Luther that will help uh, accent this, all right? Johannes von Staupitz was born in the 1460s in Saxony. His family was originally Czech. In 1485, he was accepted into the Augustinian order. He was made a doctor of theology in 1500 and made dean of theological faculty of the newly founded University of Wittenberg. He was then elected in 1503 as vicar general of the Augustinian order throughout German-speaking lands. He resigned his professorship in 1512. In 1520, he officially resigned as vicar general. Two years later, he accepted an invitation from the Benedictines to become abbot of St. Peter's Arch Abbey in Salzburg. There he died in 1524. It was in his service as the vicar general of the Augustinian order in Germany that Staupitz took in hand the spiritual care of one very troubled young Aramite. His name was Martin Luther. Luther had become a monk to save his soul after making a hasty vow to St. Anne. He tried every remedy the church suggested to him, and yet his brutally, brutal self-honesty led him to doubt his own repentance and God's love. He lived in constant fear of damnation. He would confess his sins for hours, but he could always think of more he had forgotten when he left. Staupitz believed that the cure for what ailed young Luther lay in the sacred scriptures and the picture of Christ that is there found, a Lord who welcomes sinners to himself and shows them divine mercy. Staupitz determined that the young man would earn his doctorate in theology and replace him as professor of the Bible at the University of Wittenberg. It was a move both wise and faithful. <laughs> in the sacred scriptures, Luther did indeed find at long last, at long last, the peace that had eluded him as he realized that the righteousness of the gospel is not a human achievement, but a divine gift. He realized at last that his salvation, indeed all people's salvation, depended entirely upon the obedience and righteousness of Jesus Christ alone, which can only be believed and rejoiced in. This set Luther on a collision course with the authorities of the church. Staupitz released his star pupil and troubled friend from obedience to the Augustinian order. Though Staupitz never embraced the Reformation and remained, a lo remained loyal to the Roman Pope till his death, he served a crucial role by turning the great reformer to Scripture, where Luther found consolation and joy in the Lamb of God, who truly has taken away the sins of the world. Which is just like in uh, uh, the hymn on confession and absolution. What you will bind, that bound shall be. What you will loose, that shall be free. To my dear Lord, or to my dear church, the keys are given to open, close the gates of heaven. The words of absolution give are his who died that we might live. The minister whom Christ has sent is but his humble instrument. All right, so Johannes von Staupitz, um, who served an instrumental role in driving Luther uh, to search the scriptures for um, well, Christ who is found there. Here's what Luther has to say about confession and absolution. I think um, perhaps drawing on uh, what he learned from his father confessor. Luther writes, Hence, not only are sins forgiven in baptism, but we are also made sure and certain that God is so well pleased with it that he, together with Christ and his Holy Spirit, proposes to be present when it is administered and he himself will be the baptizer. Although this glorious revelation of the divine majesty does not occur, does not now occur visibly as it did at the time on the Jordan, since it is sufficient that it occurred once as a witness and a sign. Therefore, we should diligently accustom ourselves to look upon these things with the eyes of faith and to interpret this glorious revelation and divine radiance and splendor which shone forth above the baptism of Christ as happening to us. For all this did not happen and all this was not recorded for Christ's sake, for he himself did not baptize. John 4, 2 verse 2, but rather for our comfort and the strengthening of our faith for the sake of, of which he also accepted baptism. Therefore, wherever anybody is being baptized according to Christ's command, we should be confidently convinced that God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is present there, 
and that there is pure delight, pleasure, and joy in heaven over the fact that sin is forgiven, the heavens open forever, and that now there is no more wrath, but only grace unalloyed. There ends Luther. All right, so you catch um, that the the word of absolution, Luther um, says, is a pronouncement of the gift that you receive in baptism, right? So when you hear your sins forgiven, this is nothing less than the same gift that you received in your baptism. So you'll find that compared to, uh, to his Roman predecessors, Luther's emphasis on baptism is profound and frequent and daily even. Begin with, with the sign of the cross and say, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. All right? Remembering your baptism. Again, end the day the same way. Even um, when you receive the word of absolution, again, make the sign of the cross to, mark, to, to remember that you've been marked as one redeemed by Christ the crucified. When he talks about absolution, he talks about it being declaring what's already true for you in Christ by your baptism. All right? Of course, sins are forgiven, but sins were already forgiven, but you didn't believe it. So then he sends his pastor to again proclaim that absolution again and again and again for you, always driving you back to your baptism where the old Adam is drowned and the new man rises in Christ. Okay. Our catechism this week is the third article's explanation. We say it together. What does this mean? I believe that I cannot, by my own reason or strength, believe in Jesus Christ my Lord or come to him, but the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, sanctified and kept me in the true faith. In the same way, he calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth and keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. In this Christian church, he daily and richly forgives all my sins and the sins of all believers. On the last day, he will raise me and all the dead and give eternal life to me and all believers in Christ. This is most certainly true. We pray. O Holy Spirit, who proceeds from the Father and the Son to give life and salvation to the world, and who together with the Father and the Son we worship and glorify as the only true God, receive our thanks and praise for proclaiming Christ to us through the preaching of the gospel and gifts of the holy sacraments. Faith in Jesus Christ, our Savior, hope in the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting, and love for God and our enemies are all your creations and gifts to us through the forgiveness of sins in Jesus' name. Preserve the holy Christian church among us through the faithful preaching of the gospel and the right administration of the sacraments of Christ. Bless the communion of saints that every baptized Christian, sharing in Christ's love through the forgiveness of sins in Jesus' name, might abide in Christ and bear witness to his love in all that we do and say. Give us firm hope in the resurrection of the body and life everlasting, so that we might faithfully endure persecution for Jesus' sake and suffer all, even death itself, rather than fall away from him who gave his life for us. Hear us, O Holy Spirit, for you live and reign with the Father and and the Son, one God, now and forever. Amen. We pray. Almighty God, we implore you, show your mercy to your humble servants, that we who put no trust in our own merits may not be dealt with after the severity of your judgment, but according to your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We pray this day for faith to live in the promises of holy baptism, for all vocations and daily work, for the unemployed, for the salvation and well-being of our neighbors, for our schools, our homeschools, our colleges and seminaries, and for good government and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. We pray for those who rejoice in their birthday. Yesterday, Gary. Today, um, Jim and Mallory. Rejoice with those who celebrate their baptism. Yesterday, Tim. And today, Stephen. Those are old anniversaries. We'll take those out. Pray for the households of our church, especially that of Ray and Susie, Ron, Michael, Tanya, Brandon, Don, and Jean. Pray for those who are ill, receiving treatment or recovering, especially Marcella, Kelsey, Ron, Joel, Amanda, Dan, Timothy, Janice, Sandy, Ken, Norman, Sandy, Kathy, and Mike. Pray for our homebound Bev, David, Roy, Willis, Mickey, and Paul. Pray for our mission of the month, the Federowitz family. We ask the Lord for victory over the world, and we continue to pray for those grieving 
especially the family and friends of Rev. John Herzog. For all this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. We pray a collect today in remembrance of Johann, Johannes von Staupitz. Almighty and everlasting God, for our many sins, we justly deserve eternal condemnation. In your mercy, you sent your dear Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who won for us forgiveness of sins and everlasting salvation. Grant us a true confession, so that, dead to sin, we may hear the sweet words of absolution from our confessor, as Luther heard them from his pastor, Johannes von Staupitz, and be released from all our sin, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the, excuse me, the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. All right, we sing our hymn for this week. Uh, really a lovely All Saints Day hymn. Um, we only got to sing a few of them. One of them last Wednesday and then a few of them uh, yesterday and now this one as well. So good to have you with us here today for our Congregation of Prayer, Guide for Daily Meditation and Prayer. 
come to you each morning at 9 a.m. We'll be with you again tomorrow, Tuesday, as it will be the commemoration of Martin Chemnitz, pastor and confessor. And uh, there's some uh, really apropos reading for you from Chemnitz for tomorrow. So uh, you can look forward to that. And uh, yeah, so keep you safe today. And we'll see you again tomorrow. Lord be with you all.